Welcome to the last part of lecture seven on linear independence. The next theorem is a quite a handy theorem. It allows us to kind of immediately decide whether a set of vectors in uh, Rn is linearly dependent simply by just counting the number of vectors in your set. So more precisely, we have that, say that we're given a set of p vectors in Rn, where p is this greater than n the n space that we're dealing with. And the theorem says that without even looking at the set of vectors, I can immediately claim that this set of vectors is linearly dependent. Now, why is this true? Well, we have all the tools to answer this. We're interested in looking at this vector equation. We want to see if there's a non-trivial solution to this. Now, this is equivalent to this matrix equation, and I can rewrite this as a matrix in its augmented form. So this would be my columns, V1 through Vp, and we're setting it equal to all zeros. Now what we have to take away is that the number of rows here is n, and the number of columns is p. And we're given that p is greater than n. So because p is greater than n, we have more columns than rows. So we cannot have a pivot in each column. All right. So since we can't have a pivot in each column, that means that the system of linear equation has a free variable. Now, because this is a homogeneous system, Right? We know that it always has one solution. Now, so because it has a free variable, it will actually have an infinite number of solutions. So the system of linear equations has an infinite number of solutions. And because it has an infinite number of solutions, that means that the vectors are linearly dependent. So the vectors are linearly dependent because that means that we're going to find at least one non-trivial solution to this system. So it's a very handy theorem to have around because it tells us just by counting the number of vectors whether we, we can determine whether it's linearly dependent. So let's look at this example right here. I have three vectors in R2. And in fact, if this is, in fact, let's go all the way to the beginning. We actually saw this. We saw these two vectors here, and we proved that they're linearly dependent. But the nice thing is we don't actually need to do any of that right now. We could have just said, oh, I have three vectors in R2, so it has to be linearly dependent. So linearly dependent since P is 3, which is greater than 2, which is the number uh, of entries in each vector. So I automatically know that it's linearly dependent. Okay, so I want to be um, end off here with kind of a very strong caution because a lot of uh, students have made this mistake in the past. So the theorem here is very nice because it says if I have too many vectors, then it's linearly dependent. But you have to be careful because it doesn't say what happens if p is less than n. So if you have a collection of vectors, p vectors and n, and the p is less than n, you can't automatically claim that it's linearly independent. Your set of vectors could be linearly dependent or they could be independent. And let me give you an example of both of these situations occurring. So here I have two vectors inside of R3. So 1, 1, 1, and the vector 2, 2, 2 in R3 is not linearly independent, so it's linearly dependent, right? And why is that? Well, since I have the obvious solution, 1 times the first vector minus one half times the second vector gives me zero, zero, zero. So I have a non-trivial solution to my vector equation. So here I have two vectors uh, in R3 uh, that are linearly dependent. 
And now let's look at the other ex example. We could have 100, zero, zero, comma, zero, zero, 001, and this is in R3 is linearly dependent. Oh, it's not dependent, independent. So when the number of vectors is less than n, you have to still go and check whether they're linearly independent or dependent. If the number of vectors is more than n, then it's automatically dependent. So a bunch of key idea ideas to take away from today's lecture. First, you should internalize the definition of linear independence. That's a key result and a key concept in linear algebra. You should understand the connection to homogeneous systems of linear equations. That is, you have a bunch of vectors and you want to check if they're linear independent. That means transform it into a homogeneous system of linear equations. And then you should know the special cases of linear dependence and independence. That is, if you have a small set of vectors or if you have too many vectors. We covered both of these cases. So that's it for lecture seven. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back with lecture eight uh, next time. See you then.